Hey, it's Maggie Mulhern from Modern Salon TV. I am here with my friend Mustafa Afsi. We are in the Wella Studio in New York City, and Mustafa is the king of finger waves, and he also does amazing chignons. Make sure you check out his Instagram page, which is at Hair Salon M, the letter M. He is a salon owner in Brooklyn, but like I said, it's it's the brides that you do in your finger waves and your sh amazing stuff. Anyway, so he came down here to show me how you create those amazing finger waves, and you've yeah. done a lot of prep work, so tell us basically what you do. Preparation is very important. I think it's the key, and prepping the hair before, I use volop spray completely from root to end, and it's very important because you want to get that texture in, and when you're holding the hair, you make sure that you have the enough texture all over, not just in the roots and not just in the ends. So is it, do you take each section and spray it or you spray it first? No, I just take it very tri tricky here. We take... And come on in here and panel, get real close, yeah. Brick panel over here in the back and wide sections, not smaller sections. Smaller sections tend to get too curly. It doesn't give you that big wave. So you need big wave, big hair. Okay, so then you take these sections, which look like one-inch sections. Yes, about one-inch sections, and basically you hold the hair straight, and you just comb it out, and you spray the top and the bottom and the sides. You make sure that you want to spray enough hair, but not to make it wet. And basically, my secret is shaper, shaper fierce that I I'll use. I'll in here. So Sebastian Shaper Fierce? Yeah. Yes, Shaper Fierce. Basically about Sebastian products I'm crazy about. And okay, so wait, and I'm sorry to back you up here. Do you start with dry hair and then you put the spray on, or is it slightly damp? The hairspray? No, the hair. When you start with the hair, is the hair damp or hair dry? It's damp. Yeah. I spray volop spray, and I totally dry it. Just dry it regular straight. And then when I'm taking my sections, I make sure to take brick panel sections, meaning one underneath and one on the sides, one in the middle, one on the sides, and one in the middle, one on the sides. Just make sure you have to fill in the spots. You don't want to do on top of each other, then you're missing out the, you're missing the sides. So, so it's a brick layer pattern. Exactly, okay. brick layer pattern. And, and you know what, before you start to do that, just slowly turn this around so everybody can see. Okay, here's how I roll. I place the curling iron underneath the hair. And then I kind of like twist the hair. First twist, second twist, third twist. And I just hold on about 15 to 20 seconds. And after I'm going to take the curtain iron out, I make sure to grab the hair. I don't, you don't want to let go because if it's still hot. And once you grab it, let go and just hold on to it. Once you clip it, you're going to make sure to tuck it under so it's tight and skewered. You don't want it to fall, and you have to set the hair basically in brick panel like this, the whole head. So when you open it, everywhere comes out all full, the hair. Right. Does it matter where you do the parting here? We're going to put this down, and th where you have the parting, is it based on how, the finished, how it's going to look in the finish? Basically, when you're doing all waves, people decide to do like it's remembrance of classic Hollywood. So people normally do it to the right side or the left side, whichever is your side. So a high parting, and I'm going to high slowly parting, turn this definitely around. Definitely high parting, and a lot of teasing going on in the front. You didn't tell me that. You do teasing before you even... No, no, no. When you open everything, you got to tease it out softly. I'm just going to show it right now. Okay. Obviously, we don't do a lot of rehearsal here. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so now you're going to, and I'll run over here, excuse me, so that we can see exactly what you're doing. So fill us in as you're doing. Comb it out a little bit, gentle, and then watch now. Teasing it out, teasing it. You're teasing it because you want to open this hair out. And then you go to the next one. But the trick is when you go into the next one, you don't want to just leave it, everything separate from each other. You want to comb this out a little bit. When you're teasing the hair again, you want to make sure that the second hair blends in with the first hair. You see how it falls? Basically, I'll show it to you this way. And let's go to the third one over here. You 
keep teasing, doing the same thing over and over again, giving the hair that look, the waves, just gonna follow up. Opening up is, it should be the easiest part, but setting it up the right way, it's the hardest part. You gotta, so the key is twisting it. Yeah. Is it do you elevate? Um, it looks like some of these have been obviously they're off base or elevated from the head. Does that matter? Well, it's just it matters on some people's hair. Some people have thicker hair. Some people have thinner hair. So you just take sections a little thicker if the person has thinner hair, and the person has thicker hair. You basically take wider sections, so it, you can still get that wave, but not, not to make it too, too big, because they already have big hair. All right, so we're going to go back over here, because we're, we're using this existing light. And then after you do this, you go throughout the head, because I know I only have you for another minute. After you do this, you pull them all out. What, in the pictures that I've seen, you have clips in. What is the purpose of the clips? The purpose of the clips is when I'm combing the hair down, I want to make sure that it goes with the hair that it's underneath. Sometimes that it doesn't go, and what I do is I just pull the hair down. You got to be the master for it. Just don't be afraid. You have the wave in there. Just pull it down and make sure if it doesn't connect, just take a small, smaller clips and make sure that it hold it for just a minute or two and then let it go because you want to just really connect and get that wave all in together same way. You know, that's the trick of it. Okay, so based on the ones that you've done, are you happy with this? Yes, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, I'm, and, very, and very she, happy. you know, look at her. She is thrilled. <laughs> she is so <laughs> excited. <laughs> Woo! All right, so any other tips, tricks, or things that, that the modern audience should know about finger waves? About finger waves, I tell you, it's just practice. A lot of practice. I've done it so many times, and so many times I've, I even come up with a teasing after much later on because I find teasing you have the wave in I find teasing that when you tease the hair that you can open it up make it much more wider used to I just used to let it go and brush it down you still have the wave but not enough some people like it big more bigger some people don't have enough hair so you tease it up a little bit just pull it out you'll have nice nice beautiful waves to it don't be afraid to pull the hair down because you have the waves in already all right, well, this is great. All right, so make sure you check. It's Mustafa Afsi. He has a salon in Brooklyn. That's a Brooklyn accent you're hearing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Not a British accent. And the king of finger waves. Make sure to check out his Instagram, at Hair Salon M. Amazing stuff. Next time, we're going to be talking about chignons, which are equally unbelievable. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming Thank here. So and much, had so much fun with you today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>